Tuesday. Thank you very much for joining. My name is Samantha Leduc. I'm founder of LeducTrading.com and also CIO of Leduc Capital LLC. I trade for a living and I support clients who do the same. I run a live trading room, hence why I was invited today to kind of share with you how I size up trades as well as uh, express them in the form of options, sometimes stocks, um, some, sometimes complex options, but mostly not. I'm very much a volatility trader, so I'm looking for momentum to enter in to an underlying, and then I will pay, take a position based on uh, the time frame I think it'll take for that uh, stock to move, and I simply do it using options. So let me tell you a little bit about how I work in regards to who I am and all that jazz. Um, Hopefully you got my screen here. My approach is macro to micro. So I am using a backdrop of macro economic policies as well as fundamentals on a particular stock or sector. I'm looking very much at the technicals for entries and exits, um, but I'm sizing up reversals and trends using an intermarket approach. I'll talk about that a little bit more. And then I'm using uh, a little bit of sentiment when it's at extremes and quant uh, positioning, which means uh, there's a lot of market structure that most are not really um, up to speed with as it relates to the flow of uh, buying or selling. And I'm very interested in that from the large players, this, the institutions, um, the basically very, very long or short uh, programmed traders of size. Let's just put it that way. So my modality of doing that approach, um, which is across disciplines, is what I bring into the live trading room. And I literally run the service for retail as well as an institutional arm called Leduc Trading Edge. I have three different time frames that I use, chase, swing, and trend. I'll go into that, but when I, when I literally um, make a trade from the live trading room, I'm using that as the type so that clients uh, can follow along. Maybe they like to chase, maybe they really uh, prefer just trend trading. My thing is I give them all three. Um, I also do custom uh, engagement with clients in my live trading room to help size up positions. Um, as well as duration, and everyone's different. Everyone has a different set of experiences, um, how they like to trade, you know, using stock or options. And I am one who is basically um, uh, mentoring and uh, supporting, but I'm also calling out trades that I see, and that's my claim to fame, if you will, is when I see momentum, I'm very good at spying when we're going to get movement. Uh, so that's why it's a lot of fun to be live in the trading room. So inflection points, by the way, are not just relegated to these, um, uh, you know, stocks. I am doing it on currencies. I'm doing it on commodities. I'm doing it on interest rates because that is what the big picture is about, is seeing how they relate and how the bond market is actually believing or disbelieving a particular equity move, et cetera. So I'm using that as a backdrop, and that's why I kind of come in here to explain because I am um, taking that. And then when I see live trading new, I'm in my trading room and I see live market moving news, I have a better feel for how to put it in context. And that's really my thing. Um, I operationalize this um, you know, system, if you will, this game of trading uh, typically for retail. And I have already kind of explained to you what that looks like as far as how I approach it. And if you're new and you need kind of a, um, uh, let's just say both stock and options, I provide that as well. So I'm delivering in the form of my brokerage triggered trade alerts, the underlying stock. So the option tactic, as well as the, um, the profit target and the stop loss for the underlying stock itself. So I use both. And I typically will do a trade based on one to three days. If I think that move, it's gonna move and I'll use an option that's one to three weeks out. I'm using um, oftentimes an hourly chart frame. I'll show you that. Same thing with swings. I think the move is gonna happen in one to three weeks. I will employ options typically one to three months out and I'm using a daily time frame. And for trends, you see a recurring theme because it's easy for me to keep in mind. Um, trends typically last one to three months and I employ options that are three to six months out. So those are my three main 
uh, time frames and I put everything in context. Um, some will just day trade. They go to cash at the end of the day. Some will only trend trade. I don't care. I'm trying to add value to each type. And then in particular, the risk management that I employ and the reason I give you this kind of preface is because I'm going to be showing you how I manifest these ideas in the form of trade alerts. So I want you to have kind of this understanding that I'm trading small but frequently. So right now I have, you know, 25 open positions, but they don't take up, you know, more than this. So I have, you know, one to three percent of available equity. And if it's a lotto, it's just that I'm willing to risk it all. <laughs> Um, trade momentum, I will do both directions. Chases, not as much because I'm, you know, kind of busy, if you will, sizing up and managing um, trades and also scanning the news and, and earnings releases or whatever happens to be, could be Fed Day. So I'm anticipating volatility and I'm looking and conf for confirmation. So typically my swing game is the largest, the bread and butter, if you will. So I don't risk more than I'm willing to lose. That's a really, really, really important thing. So I'm not necessarily going to, um, I'm not gonna babysit a lotto. It's just gonna go and it's gonna work or it's not. Um, I might do obviously more babysitting of a position that has more time. And I want to just emphasize that I do not trade big and heavy because I'm doing lots of other things. So I want to make sure that if it goes against me, I can still sleep at night. Um, I don't sell. Uh, calls and puts unless it's part of a defined option uh, tactic. And I do have a few strategies I like. I have done seminars here on like financed call spreads, adore those, but it's not something that necessarily clients can follow because of the margin requirements. So you can simplify and, you know, do a call spread alone. But if I'm really bullish on a particular position um, for a longer duration, I typically do that kind of, of, of tactic. And I will show you some of the things that I have uh, have done. Let's just get out of, hold on, where did, where'd my screen go? <laughs> there it is. All right, and I'll find the next little uh, piece here, which is screen share, screen share. All right, so this is my website. And clients come in and basically I have a trading room and that runs from 9 to 1230. I also have a director of research and education who runs an afternoon program. I have everything recorded. So it is immediately archived on my live trading room page and it includes closed captioning. So we're talking about transparency across the board, whether it is recorded um, with closed captioning and brokerage triggered trade alerts. So we'll talk about those, which are down the way. I have a, a fishing club, which I affectionately call, which is more, <laughs> which is really where I put my, um, my information of what I see, whether it's, you know, an inflection point, be aware, or whether it's a sector rotation, in particular, the growth to value rotation. I write a lot about that because that's an incredibly profitable area when you have, um, you know, this reflation trade, if you will, going into oversold energy um, plays or reopening plays, et cetera. So this is where I put together a lot of my content for clients. And then right down here, my brokerage triggered trade alerts. So let me explain how that works. I have literally a system where my real money sitting at interactive brokers is not being touched manually. I have an app that I had built and it sits on top, so it's a database driven app that sits on top of IB so that when I place a trade in the app, whatever it is, stock, options, futures, it will then go into IB and once IB fills the order and only once IB fills the order, it will relate back to that app. So there's no manual, I'm not touching anything. It, there's no copy and paste, there's no Excel spreadsheet, nothing. It is literally filling at IB and then it comes back into my app, which is tied to my customer's cell phone, email, and the website. So then it shows up literally only when it's filled and only at that price. So there's no question. <laughs> and then it comes in a brokerage trigger trade alert and it looks something like this. So this actually, um, Andrew opened up, that's not mine today. I happened to open up um, 
a, a swing trade, I closed a Fay trade, I opened a CVS trade, I closed a G Pro, get the point? So when I am literally, I'm entering a trade, once IB fills it, it comes back and it populates on the website. It also sends an SMS and it sends an email and it gives the structure of that trade. So we'll talk about how I look technically at a trade and then how I enter that tactic and or the stock. Um, some things that have worked, some things that haven't. And I'll kind of go over that with you as soon as I look here at, oh, hello, thank you. Um, look at, also if you, if you wanna see something, you can just let me know. But here's an example where this is um, a trade that I put in one and a half position. Now, by the way, this is, everyone's got their own size book. It might be a thousand, it might be a hundred thousand, it might be a million. That's not my concern, but um, this is basically sized to be like that one to one and a half, one to 3% of available equity. That's my comfort. So I can have a lot of trades on. And then this is automated like an OCO or a conditional order. So if I put, for example, um, I entered G Pro, just for example, at 726, my stop loss is 650. If it was to hit 650, it would close. I can have a profit exit of 955. I decided to lighten up today and I manually closed it. Very different from when it automates, it, it just closes because it hits a target. So it will show if I have 100% sold, 50% sold. In other words, if I trim, I can show that as well. The date entered, the date exited, and then of course the percentage lost or earned. So this is something where I'm now trying to go back and then show you what made me get into these, you know, into these plays. Um, Andrew just opened, you know, DraftKing today. Um, I closed Camping Rolls because it wasn't going anywhere. So that's another thing. I have, I want to lighten up. I don't think it's really going to get any momentum. I'm wrong. I want to get out. Um, you know, some are not working at all. McDonald's, not at all. <laughs> so this is where I do all of the let's say relaying of the trade and I will show you what's open. Um, Advanced Options happens to be Andrew. He's the one that teaches in the afternoon and I'm the one that is basically the swing and uh, you know, this is a butterfly. So my reason for showing you this system is because when I go into my trading day, okay, let's just make sure I've got this on share, yep. When I go into my trading day, the very first thing I'm trying to do is figure out what's moving. Um, yesterday, for example, we had four from the trading room early in the morning that looked really good. And I will basically call out the level. Okay, as long as it's blink, as long as it, you know, it stays above 2484 on a daily, and by the way, this is hour, day, and week time frame, then that's a low risk entry long. It looks like it's pulling back and it's ready to relaunch. This is also in that very speculative space of EV plays, but it has nonetheless worked and it's technically a pattern that I like. So that's, for example, a chase, right? It probably is going to take a few days and then let's see how the market performs. Um, it could turn into a swing and this expansion could literally at the pullback, the 21 day could lead to that expansion. So there are chases that will present themselves because the chart looks good, or I've been waiting for this to get above 504 to head up to 650, and sure enough, it does, right? This is Tesla. I can also see tremendous call buying coming into a play. In fact, I just literally hopped off um, a webinar that I host on Wednesdays, every Wednesday from four to five, my guest captain interview series, and my guest on Tuesday have built a fabulous app, which helps um, folks, especially who are new to trading, but also those app option traders that want to see the, the, the flow, the, the jacks, if you will, and other kind of um, indicators of bullishness and potential risk. So long story short, you can catch that under my uh, interview page on my public blog, and that is um, every Tuesday. We talk today about Tesla, this unrelenting call buying that keeps coming into Tesla. Very tough to short. Jim Chanos just admitted as such, and he had to cover some because he's been really hurting. 
Uh, Tesla's up 1,200% this year. So what did I see today? And we talked about it, Jonathan, myself. The September, as an example, and hopefully you can see down here, and if you can't, somebody let me know. This is a $200 million premium that has been rolled from $700 calls that had been rolled from $600 calls. So why do I care about you know, this particular strike or this particular rolling action? It means they're still bullish and they're a whale. I'm not, you're not. <laughs> so somebody has vested interest for this to go higher and they're sticking with it. So this is a $200 million bet I'm kind of keeping my eyes on. So until that start, until they take that off the table, until this unmitigated um, call buying keeps happening in these plays, and I'm, by call buying, I mean, you can see today, this is volume, this is the option contract busyness that's just today. Now, granted, that's a rolling of a strike, but you get my point. It's extremely bullish. Do you see any puts here? Okay, they're chasing, that's true. Somebody, you know, they don't know better. In any case, you can do this with open volume on lots of plays, PLTR, NEO, um, you know, pick some of the, the, the SPACs. Right now I can't, yeah, there we go. So that is one of the ways that I can help clients stay on the right side of a trade. So Tesla is not done. Yes, it has S&P inclusion. Um, on December 21st. And yeah, they're probably going to have some disruptions around that time period. But currently, the stock has been a gorgeous continuation play. Um, this is when they were announced, in fact, into the S&P right here. And the pre-split price at the time was like 2,500. We're like 3,300. If you remember the, the, the split that Tesla had, five for one. And then it pulled back and then it's, you know, lost a little bit of steam, but it never broke. And now it's straight up again. So those are the types of things that I'm looking at. The Tesla, the BLNK, um, the Planeteer, which is another kind of, you know, Neo. This is what I look for also when I was short Neo. So also in my guest captain interview, um, last week, we were talking about the NEO call buying had kind of softened. They weren't, they weren't so busy all of a sudden. Well, I bought a $45 put for December and my price target was $38.44 because of the market, because of the, the, the 10 week, which is this gray moving average, um, excuse me, this gray moving average on a weekly. So this has been in trend and it's been phenomenal, but it looked like it was softening. It had a very nice break. It came all the way down and literally tagged perfectly the top of the Keltner and the 10 week and then bounced. And intraday, it bounced, I think 17%. It went from this, you know, 38 all the way back up to $48. It was impressive. So I covered short. I didn't chase that long, but clients can see when I'm covering. Does that make sense? So my price target was hit and it's bounced. I don't know what it's gonna do next. Honestly, I don't care so much about this one right now. I've moved on. <laughs> so um, PL today was choppy down. I Okay, so PLTR, this was great yesterday, but not so much today because it's calmed down, but it's still above the three day. So depends on your time frame. honestly, this is still very, very bullish. Look at the call buying that's going on. When in doubt, add time. I mean, these IVs are ridiculous. So they're theta decay killers if you do have a quiet day like this. Most likely though, this streak, I can't even, I can't even do it. It's not done. So until we actually see collectively um, some triggers for profit taking, uh, it's, it's likely to continue. So here's a, a list, for example, that I put together for clients on Friday for the week ahead. These were plays that we were doing and or that I had suggested. So today, for example, I sold my go-go just because it hit this trend line and I've been in here since November. It didn't do anything for several weeks. And then today it shot up, you know, a decent amount. And that's where you see So you see go-go. So I actually entered that. This is my cat. She wants dinner. 
Come here, Stella. Um, I entered that on November 12th. You can see this right here. Am I doing the screen share right? Okay. So you can see I did, I entered this. I entered a January $15, uh, $13 call. It was the monthly. Okay. And then I, it just sat there. It didn't break. You can kind of see that it just went sideways. It's still on the 10 week. It's still kind of moving, you know, shallow pullbacks. And then today it, it moved higher. I'm still bullish this big, big picture, but I obviously had some decent gains. I wanted to take those off because I don't know what the market's going to do. And I kind of just felt a little nervous about that. So it was a manual close. It wasn't even up, you know, 57% isn't like, woo. Um, I did a BlackBerry last week on Monday and that was an earnings move. This is another way that I kind of manifest a trade. This happened with BlackBerry. I had been sitting in here for a while. So I will show you that trade. Sorry, I've got to go back to Monday. Um, that's Zynga. Where is this? Forward 86, right? Was that last week? Yeah, that was last week. Help. LMND. Oxy. GME. Oh yeah, how'd GME do after hours? I haven't even had a chance to look yet. So this BlackBerry, here it is. I opened this BlackBerry um, on December 2nd because I had already closed a BlackBerry and I was still bullish. Does that make sense? So here's, here's the BlackBerry one. I added this 1120 and I closed it on December 1st. They had earnings. I went out in time to a January 15, $6 call. So at the time I got it, it was $5.59. That was the underlying stock price. I bought a $6 call for January. Again, this was back in November and earnings were let's just say a really big success. And I had a 1.75 position, which means it was a good size, right? So I was pretty, pretty convinced this was going to do really well. And it was 800% return. So that's where I'm putting time, November to January, but it's actually an earnings play. Does that make sense? Um, GoPro was just a chart. It was also a January swing or trend time frame expecting it to move higher. This morning I closed it. So I opened this literally on December 1st and it was an $8 call. And I just closed that manually today because I, I think I mentioned to you, I really want to lighten up. I've got um, some concerns that we're going to see some volatility come in. And it had been a nice, you know, breakout of this trend line, stayed above the three and the eight. It's done nothing wrong. It tagged a prior, you know, weekly resistance level. I still think it can head up to 955 and, and 10, 1050, but it just felt prudent to take some down. That makes sense. So ones that, you know, didn't work and didn't have enough time on it at all, Baba. So I like this. Uh, this was post all uh, the drama, if you will, of, uh, uh, China actually doing some financial regulation on their own companies, but this looks like a rollover candidate needs some time to get down to 231. I didn't give it enough time. So to me, this, I'm still bearish as long as it stays above um, short term 268, but I'm completely wrong if it gets back above this 280. So I need more time. It's actually a much better put spread, a directional just didn't work. It's, it's too much sideways for two weeks and a directional on a, on a monthly, it, you really need to have a little bit more oomph. However, <laughs> that didn't work for Oxy. Oxy I've added because it came after this lovely move higher and the whole the Pfizer and the reopening and the energy and, you know, gas move. It came down to the 200 day, entered it here, but it was a 16 by 20 call spread. And I can show you that. I'm still long this. Did not expect this to go so quickly. Honestly, this was up 13 and a half percent yesterday. And then we had an inside day and then it pushed higher again. I'm still seeing this 50 week as price target. So 2021 to start. A lot of these reflation trades are moving really well. 
And call spreads for me are a way to kind of add some time. If you're really directionally bullish and you're chasing something like FSLY happened today, it actually happened two days ago, came back in and then of course shot up again, 15%. So these would be, you know, you're jumping into the, to the momentum of near duration calls. Um, a call spread allows you some forgiveness, obviously, if it comes back against you, like this did, for example. So it lets you capture within a defined period of time, um, but they're not as profitable if you're right. Yes, I like Oxy also because it has a 12% trailing dividend yield, and there is a huge hunt for yield going on right now. Yep. I don't, you know, it's funny. I, you know, I saw, for example, I didn't play SFIX and yet I was very bullish and said in the room that I really, and I have for actually a while now, this retail play, um, it's a laggard IPO. I can show you my lists with this, recommending this above 30, beautiful move, but this was a bearish engulfing on a weekly. And then yesterday it stayed on support. And I mentioned, you know what? I have no edge for earnings, no idea how this is going to work out. Um, but I like this obviously since 30. I think it's going to be, but I don't have a position. I don't have calls. I don't have a call spread. I don't, I'm not selling, you know, with the, with a high IV, I'm not selling anything. I'm going to see what happens. And then I regretted not being in it, but I also was in Zynga and that totally disappointed. Um, so that's what I mean by don't, um, risk more than you're willing to lose. So if I'm wrong, I don't have my head handed to me. And if I'm right, especially in like a BB, which was relatively cheap, that was a good directional play and it had a fabulous look. Let me just show you real quick. You can't tell now because it's so compressed, but this move, and then it's trying to get above this 50 week and then it tried and it broke above the 50 week. And I thought that's a really nice move. It, it looks like it's, it's found its base and it's breaking out. VFF was the same exact thing. That wasn't an earnings move. That was just a momentum and a pattern move. So that's some of the stuff that I do for bottom fishing plays. Now let me talk about some of the beautiful trend continuation plays. Part of what I do on the technical side is using candlesticks. I happen to love candlesticks. This is a pullback on the 20, uh, excuse me, on the 10 week, which was a morning star reversal, breaks out, comes back in. It's doing fine, right? And then it had earnings. It just got above. And my mention was as long as it stays above this open and then the trigger is 165, it continues beautifully. ZS, same thing. This was a nice breakout, boom. And if you see these plays that have been absolutely in trend, they've been defended, then they have a particular pattern, they break out, they shoot higher with some emphasis. Same thing with Spotify. We caught that in the room, in fact. So my price target, I said, is 300, but if it gets through that, it's gonna fire higher. So we use a lot of trend lines and patterns and moving averages. And then I'm basically constructing an option strategy based on if I think I'm gonna have, um, I need to wait until a trigger, you know, a catalyst that brings, for example, today was a nice boom, you know, it, it still has a long way to go. Um, or what was the other one I just showed you? Go, go. And what was the other one? Not Groupon. <laughs> Another G. Can you remember? GoPro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's what I mean by GoPro, why, why would I buy GoPro? These oversold kind of bottom fishing plays, they're coming up from the dead and they're moving and there's still lots of levels higher that they can fill. To me, LMND looked this way as well and it's a recent IPO. So I played an $80 call, I, it literally closed and I said, you know what? This thing looks pretty bullish above 77. I'm going to add a call spread because I don't know how long it's going to take to get to 100, but I think if 80, then 100. Everyone knows that rule, right? So it's a fun one. You know, there's a rule of thought, if you will. If you get to 80, it's likely going to 100. Well, guess what yesterday happened? This hit 99. Okay, I can't show you. Huh. Trust me. This hit 99.99, not 100. Happened way faster than I expected. My call spread 
didn't really, first of all, two reasons it didn't pay. One, it didn't pay because I needed more time for that sold call to come back down. It was, it was too soon. So only a 50% instead of what should be a two to one. The other reason, interactive brokers was down. I could not sell. <laughs> so my entire trade alert system was down with the rest of the world and there was no ability to get out. And I remember in the trading room going, if you have this, $100 my price target, but it won't trigger because it says $99.99. And sure enough, that bugger came right back in. Anyway, this is um, some, of, uh, some of the plays and that's trading. Sometimes it works perfectly. Other times, not so much. And if you have, you know, a, a feeling of a direction of a, of a sector and you want to then go and find some really good plays within that sector, like Oxy with a 12% trailing dividend yield, um, you know, that, that's, that's what I do. The lots and lots of growth plays have done extremely well to shop is one that I just mentioned Andrew put on today, okay? Because it looks like it's ready to break this 1116. And if it does, it's got some nice, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. It's got some nice air above it, right? It gets above 116. It has definitely some room to the upside. Let's see, how did he express that trade? API, CP, that's a that's DraftKings <sighs> shop. So he did stock. He did straight stock. There you go. All right. So that's one way of also kind of minimizing some of the issue with um, wide spreads or illiquid spreads or expensive spreads. Just buying a stock. <laughs> so this is a list and this is what I also share with clients, not just the option flow and the tactics of uh, how to express a trade, but sometimes these are pattern recognition plays, right? This is a beautiful scoop pattern. If it takes off above this 1450, it's, it's got some air to go. Uh, GoGo has been fundamentally a um, reason for holding. I was actually long into this earnings, and then I basically didn't do anything until it got back above nine um, and a half, entered it again, it took me several weeks before today's move. Uh, Rite Aid was one that I recommended above 13. Again, this is all COVID related because um, they had this uh, newsprint a little while ago that Amazon, of course, is coming into the online pharmacy business and all three, Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid sold off hard. But at the same time, you can't give shots online for COVID and they're gonna be rolling out at the Rite Aid, the CVS and the Walgreens. So this started percolating and had a nice shape, obviously got above the 200 day and then has just gone straight up. That level $13 calls, simple, at the money. I happen to like at the money or really close to it um, or a call spread that would basically, you know, 14 by 16 kind of thing. Well, it shot way higher, exceeded my um, price target. These are some of the S packs that are coming in and I'm honestly not up to speed on them, but we have a nice watch list of you know, 196 players. And this is a very popular one that's coming onto the radar of um, Chamath, if you're familiar with him and, and social capital. So this is getting bid. Same thing, um, there are several others like that. These, the Oxy play that we talked about has been obviously um, part of the whole higher, higher oil, but also reflation and also hunt for yield. So that's just a proxy. If you, Axon is actually the best proxy for oil. It's the largest, but you know, the point is it's sometimes fun to add a few more and have a basket. So Exxon's been doing phenomenally since 3270. Anything above 3270 is just really, really good. And it gapped up on a daily, the, five or the Pfizer, and then came back down, gapped up, shallow pullback, gapped up, shallow pullback, and it's still rocking and rolling. Very, very strong sector. It's basically a pile on 
um, for those who have missed it, basically the, the, the fear of missing out because they can see the rotation from some of these large cap plays that have been sitting there for many months now. Not the, the low, the mid, mid tier growth, not to confuse, right? So Jemaya is the Amazon of Africa and it had this gorgeous, absolutely stunning trend line came underneath the 10 week, but then shot right through it. That has continued. It has just been price target, price target, and supported in the 21. So depending on how you know um, someone trades, this for me is more of a swing trade to a trend trade for Andrew. So he has, he has stock as an example. Um, for me, I'm looking at things that are gonna be similar, like today with SFIX, a very similar play is RVLV, specialty retail, and sure enough, it continued up 6.7%. So that was a recommendation first thing this morning, and then I could see some of the flow coming in, you know, whether it be the $30 calls, which are out of the money, or the 25, but this looks like a nice play. Again, laggard IPO, similar space to SFIX. The other When you say latency and slippage, as far as between the app, when it fires to IB, IB fills, and then that uh, takes a second to get back to the app and then trigger the alerts. So when you talk about slippage, are you so no, not that the latency has been reduced greatly. When you're talking about slippage, are you talking about wide spreads and how to get the mid and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, there's a lot of programming behind that. Um, I have the choice, obviously, of entering as a market or a limit. Um, OCO, which means you can have a conditional order based on the underlying price, uh, percentage trailing stop, a dollar amount tra trailing stop, a time-based uh, trading uh, <laughs> trailing stop. So that is um, the benefit of putting it in my app, I'm not looking at it. I, I honestly just, you know, it's gonna, the process has to take care of itself in my mind. <laughs> um, Andrew is definitely more granular with eyes on the, on the prize. He is someone who does trade credit spreads and teaches credit, credit spreads in our afternoon um, uh, webinar. And that I think absolutely requires you to be eyes on the prize all the time. So my stuff is more directional but then again, I'm teaching and writing and, you know, there, there's a little bit more um, retail institute. There's a lot more going on. <laughs> so I need something that I can actually like set it and forget it. So I'm the set it and forget it girl. Um, and he's definitely um, micromanaging all the trades, including the credit spreads. So the, um, some of these others, and these are just recent ones, but you can see how I'm kind of creating, if you will, uh, watch lists. This is for the week. Um, this is just for the week. One of the best performing one was platinum. And this was actually off of an intermarket uh, analysis call that I made last week that platinum was about ready to take off. So this is not an option play at all. And in fact, it was not even $3. I said, once it hits three, it should take off. Platinum to trade the commodity is extremely expensive. So you have a lot of margin in a, in a commodity um, underlying that most retail is not going to touch. Um, and if you play futures, you'll know what I mean. But this is cheap, wicked cheap, PLG. It's kind of a surrogate, if you will, for it. But there are no options. So that's a pure stock play. Um, so the others just kind of go down the list are themes that I stick with. And then I'll go back into it. I'll get bored. I'll go back into it. But this is, for example, you know, dogs and cats. You can see this track date, okay? Dogs and cats are, they're not doing very well, but I really have hope for them. It's not a long list, it's like 50 items. Look what happened with, with GoGo. That has been doing awesome, right? Since $3.53. US Steel, that's also up 150% um, since August. So I put together newsletters with themes. In other words, uh, I had one for the second half. I had a whole bunch for the second half. And Roku was among them, right? And I have that I revisit that at the end of a quarter. I'll go through all of those theme plays to see how they're doing. So 
that's, you know, the second half, I have one for Q4, the, co the COVID plays, I started entering those extremely early. So I had actually um, COVID um, analysis and worries on January 25th, I wrote an article, the perfect storm, uh, coronavirus and market risks and started creating a watch list for COVID plays then. And this has been an absolute outperformer. You can see, and I'm not in all these plays, I'm talking about these are themes that we can go keep going back to. So I already know that this theme is going to be revisited time and time again. You know, Myrna is up 831%. Um, you know, so my point is I will keep these themes and then we can go back to the well over and over and over again. IPOs, the, the, you know, the dogs and cats, which didn't look at all interesting back in October. And now look at them, you know, they're, they're poking up, especially the US Steel and the GMs and, the, and, and such. So I will keep these and review because the market has this, you know, it's a bull market all the time somewhere. And in particular, we've had this incredible work from home cloud theme the nets of the word. We've also had, I'll teach you in a minute, honey. <laughs> We've also had the uh, EV players. Hold on, let's get the EV, the pot stocks, the S packs. So here are the EV players, right? This has been insane since 1120. And this was actually when I said, I said, careful, I think we need to short some of these. That's when I actually shorted Neo. They will have rhythm right? They will go up and then they come back down and they'll go back and the whole thing is playing that depending on your time frame. So um, the interesting thing to me is some of these are becoming freaks of nature. So this QS, for example, today, not only is it, you can see, incredibly parabolic, but there's no inventory available for the shorts to cover. That's a market phenomenon. So we have you know, some reasons why these keep getting elevated in addition to your typical, okay, they're chasing Neo, they're chasing Planetar, they're chasing Tesla. So I keep these you know, um, silos of themes and then I have my tells, my intermarket analysis, um, which I pull back in time to kind of size up. And then I have also some um, intermarket, another intraday, excuse me, indicators that I'm using to decide what flow of the market is bullish, neutral, or bearish. So I don't want to add more positions. For example, like today, I'm getting into a, I think we're going to go neutral. We're going to get into this, you know, kind of choppy thing. And I don't want to have so much on. So I manually closed some positions. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's really hungry. But I had a webinar right before this one. <laughs> Um, so she'll trust me this, if you saw this cat, you'd know she never missed a meal. So anyway, um, the other kind of themes that I have liked for a long time and we keep playing right now, we have that growth to value rotation, but the IPO theme has been incredible. So this literally some, since November, 2019, um, these have been my kind of strongest continuation plays, whether it be, you know, Neo, Fever, Fitch, Zoom, you know, the usual suspects. Well, then Zoom comes back. Where does it stabilize? Is this bullish or bearish? I'm looking at these themes because, you know, when a COVID headline hits, you have a work from home rotation, right? And then when we have a vaccine, oh, well, then those work from home, they sell off slightly. Which ones are laggards make for great earnings plays? Honestly, SVIX would have been a great earnings play. One that I have played um, besides, or most recently, is GME, I'm afraid to look, and it's down. So that didn't work. I have been long, I've been long, I've been long again. If this is in that whole gaming you know, um, sector, which has been very strong, I'm expecting potentially earnings to be beneficial for the stock. So in that particular case, it's a call spread, but it has to go up. <laughs> so you can still lose on a call spread, just like you can lose on a directional. Um, but ATVI had a better setup. This really was a much better play where it came back down, looked bullish, 
it, then finally said in the trading room, okay, I just got a trigger. It's literally pushing through four levels of support. That's bullish on a weekly. Anything above this 79 and a half is going to be bullish and it continues. So you can kind of see this was the energy it needed to get above and it has continued for two days. So ATVI is one that has done a good job. Data jog, as far as a pullback to support, isn't really going too much too fast, but it has potential. Same thing, like a shop, crowd, ZS, um, PDD. These are all fabulous plays that were about ready to break out or they were pullbacks to support. I still like, you know, the dogs and the cats too. The squeeze, I do use a squeeze um, indicator, but not majorly, my majority of, of indicators, you know, they're, they're not really what you'd call um, high probability. I just use it as one tool in the toolbox. The bigger thing that I'm looking at is definitely the market direction, staying in the direction of the market. Um, that to me is the tide rises all boats kind of thing. And then individually, the trigger, not just technically, you can see volume coming in, but also a reason for it to continue higher. This single stock gamma option flow has been unrelenting in certain sectors like the EV plays, um, the Teslas in particular. There's no reason to kind of like stop or try and short something that is that strong. Volatility, the dollar, they have been suppressed. Yields, they're choppy, but they're lower. Um, you know, relatively speaking, there isn't really any impetus to get into a macro trade because currencies have just not been participating in um, this equity rally, this reflation reopening vaccine driven rally. So I'm using whatever I can basically find for the trades of the day, which are chases, and then setups like an ATVI, um, the continuation plays that basically look like they've digested for a while and they're ready to break out again. GME obviously isn't working right now. It's 1480, but we'll see what the market is tomorrow. Needs to stay above um, the 10 week and it could come all the way back down and then bounce. So I'm going to be patient. I'm not going to close it out and freak out. <laughs> but for the most part, this is how I am kind of sizing up market direction. It's technical, it's quant. Um, for sure, it's market structure. I know I've, I've talked about that before. I have my eyes on volatility. I definitely have concerns that we've got some, you know, trend line tags here on a monthly that could reverse in a moment's notice risks coming up, whether it be brisket or brisket, Brexit or the um, shutdown, um, China, electoral college, um, COVID bill, disappointment, vaccine disappointment, year end pension rebalancing, um, year end tax harvesting. So these are things, tax gain harvesting, these are things that I look at as, okay, we're typically bullish into um, end of year. Definitely the Santa rally is traditionally bullish, not all. We've had some major, major reversals. We're getting into a point where I can definitely see um, currencies starting to percolate, meaning dollar rise, because uh, we've extremely oversold and very heavily short as far as the institutions. So if they start to cover, then tech is going to sell off. These growth plays are going to sell off. We haven't gotten there yet. I'm still watching for that. So that's part of my job is to kind of look at the market and say, what's safe? You know, and, and how, how tight do you want to, um, you know, rein this trade in? But definitely when it comes to this type of euphoric environment, um, trade small. And keep in mind, this is a bull market somewhere right now, not in volatility. Lots of suppression in, in rates and dollar and volatility, but we're getting into some key levels for reversal. And I want to have some VIX. So my VIX is for January. So it's not right now. Um, I have some, again, directional leanings, but right now it doesn't seem like it matters when we have the, um, you know, the, the SPACs of the world still getting bid and the Teslas of the world 
still rolling massive, massive premiums. So we got, we, we got risk coming on the horizon, there's no question, and it will probably be very quick, and folks will remember how to buy puts again. <laughs> but for right now, not so much. <laughs> So let me know if there's something else you're kind of looking at. I'm happy to go over it. This is the deal in my end of, where is this? There it is. Oh, I got two of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need two of these. Like I just opened up a J&J &J today, for example. I'll show you my open trades today. How's that? I opened up five, right? I'll open up five. Oh my gosh, my cat is like, so I opened up J&J. Why? Because Pfizer and BNTX and, you know, um, Moderna and the rest have obviously had their trials already announced and they're moving. J&J &J looks, for me, like a relatively safe bet at this break above the trend line, as long as it stays above this 149. But honestly, the IV was what really got me involved. When is the last time you've seen, if you're an option trader, an IV in the 20s? Show me. <laughs> It, it doesn't exist. Right now we have so much elevated premium in IV that the, um, the usual suspects are in the 60s, 80s, 150, 250, 300 IV. So they're moving like Jagger. J&J uh, &J is what you'd call really boring trade, but to me that looks like a good risk reward if it can stay above this 149 and head to 155 and we'll see after that. The other trade I opened up, CVS. Um, high risk, but because it's another one of those kind of bottom fishing plays and it already had a very strong run. So why would I open it up after three days of a strong run? Because it's on support. So as long as it stays above 72, I think this can continue higher, basically. What else did I open up? Um, and by the way, that, I forget to say that's January. Yes, yes, yes. CVS was a January $75 call and J&J &J was a January $150 call. So pretty close. Well, obviously the CVS is a little bit out of the money, 75, but J&J &J was in the money at 150. Make sense? Okay, another one that's also a swing trade that I opened up. And I know you're like, why after it's already run? Yesterday I had seen a very large option flow um, move for Norwegian. And it was right after news that they were implementing um, an air quality control system on their cruise ships. So it did pretty well, obviously, from this Pfizer news. It's gotten above the 50. This is the breakout above the last time it reached its high on the value reflation trade back in June, June 3rd, before it came back down and stayed here for a while. So for me, this is like, you know what? I think it's got a nice channel here. So I added NCLH based on that news, based on the technical, um, based on, I mean, ADIV is not cheap, but it had the stuff, if you will, for a $30 call. So I'm $2 out of the money, um, but if we're gonna actually stay above this level, I think this has some room to go over the next month, especially if we get any continuation of a, of a rotation into the reflation, revalue, um, reopening trades. So those were boring trades I added today. <laughs> I showed you the ones I closed, right? The GoGo, um, the G Pro, and we've already gone over. I'm trying to see what else, anything else? Oh yeah, I closed Faye because it was flat. Ooh, it's a good thing I closed Faye. That's down pre-market, I mean, after hours. Oh yeah, I even got some CPE, which is highly, highly speculative and a small cap energy, I don't recommend. But the point is it has nothing to do with fundamentals It had to do with the shape. So these were just examples of swing trades that I entered today um, and a, a cue put for risk control. In other words, if we do get a sudden swoon, I wanna make sure that we have, I have some um, protection here in the queues, especially after one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 days of green uh, from this breakout. Make sense? So that's how that works. Um, live trading room um, plus options education as well as uh, 
just like I said, more insight into advanced option tactics, lots of written uh, analysis if you're into that kind of thing like macro and intermarket uh, institutional product, the trade alerts, open trades, live portfolios, which are the closed trades. And then this lovely little thank you for participating. If you want to try out the room, I do have uh, different levels, obviously, annual, monthly. This is a special $100 off right before Christmas. I think we are going to get some volatility. I'm really well versed in trading volatility as it relates to a market turn. Uh, that's uh, my thing. You can see the teenagers in the background. That is um, where I learned how to, to manage volatility. <laughs> so, um, no, my, the, the, the trade, the brokerage triggered trade alert system is completely custom. It took a year and a half to build. It's Python. It is, oh my God, the logic and the rules and we keep adding to it, um, you know, to deal with day of expiry and, you know, different legs, the, the, the bag trades, obviously, when you have the multi-leg option trades. Um, the OCO, which I do my own little special thing on, right? So I might want it time-based. Um, a lot of things you can do within Interactive Brokers or another brokerage platform, but mine is, if I want something, uh, basically, I have Zeek build it into the software. So speaking of software, I have a fabulous partner, um, mention of uh, Jonathan Gibbons of VigTech, and let me just show you real quick. It's not launched yet, but it will be. I have three automated trading strategies that will be standalone products that will be launched probably the first of the year. Um, three, chase, swing, and trend timeframe. This is my risk on, risk off indicator. It is totally separate from the, my live trading room commentary, my macro to micro analysis, the educational webinars, and my brokerage triggered trade alerts. Totally standalone products, depending on if you're trading intraday and you wanna stay safe, whether you're swing trading before you actually start lightening up and go to neutral and then go to short, and trend trading, which is a tool that hedge funds, <clears throat> excuse me, in um, particular environments, you can avoid large drawdowns with this particular trigger. It basically is an alert, doesn't go off very often, but when it does, it means get out of the pool, which means protect your hedge, your portfolio now. So I have three automated trading strategies that'll be um, launched the, the first of the year that my partner is uh, developing. And Jonathan and I speak every Tuesday about the market structure and you know where to find me. I hope you will take advantage of the special and I wish you a fabulous week and then into Happy Hanukkah and Merry Christmas. And uh, oh yes, the EDGE membership is different. It is institutional. So it's gonna be um, very select macro trades. Um, there's a, a, a voice memo that I do intraday. All the same memberships, benefits, but it's more institutional. So what are, what are rates gonna do? Um, Again, palladium, platinum, hard to trade for retail, but not for institutional. Um, lumber, I timed a lumber short really, really well earlier this year. That was an institutional um, uh, trade suggestion, not in my trade alerts at all. And that was phenomenal. So that went from 850 to 450. Um, again, there's just requirements that sometimes institutions have a bigger book and uh, different risk um, parameter and they can't sit inside of a trading room all day. 